Holy shit. So today we're gonna learn how to get rescued from a crevasse. When touring on a glacier, things can be really easy and mellow and all of a sudden your partner falls into a crevasse. That can happen basically any time and you need to be ready for it. Holy shit. First step is going to be to secure my friend. So now I've got all the traction on me. So it's really uncomfortable. So I'm gonna have to basically block myself. So a good technique is to... Okay. Can you hear me? Communication is really difficult and normally you don't hear the person inside. So you hope that they're gonna do the first step to secure themselves so they're not gonna fall deeper and deeper if there is a snow bridge underneath them. I am locked in with the ice crew. Wow, it's harder than you think. Okay, send the first alert. So we're gonna make an anchor to secure all the traction from this rope down there so we can liberate all the slack. And the slack is gonna be used to create a hoist to pull the victim. Now it's really hard with the tension on the rope. And it pulls a lot more than what you think. Obviously the better, the deeper the better. But as a first step, we'll do it while we can. And worst case, we could do a second one to really secure it. So we're gonna take a ski and we're gonna make a snow anchor. The compacting is quite important. So that is going to be the pulley traction. It blocks this way, but slide this way. So now with the anchor, I'm going to put the pulley traction on the carabiner, on the anchor, just sliding forward a little bit and just checking that the anchor is solid. I think that we're good for now. So it's not 100% ready. Now I'm gonna use all the slack of the rope to make all the rescue system. So now I can take myself off. And you see all the weight is taken on the pulley. So now we've done a snow anchor because there is no ice around. But if there was ice, it would be a lot quicker to just put an ice cream into the ice and make all the belay from there. So now I'm going to go on the edge to check how my friend is. If I just leave all the slack hanging, if the anchor breaks, my friend will fall all the, the length of the slack and will pull me with him for sure. So it's important when you go onto the edge to keep a bit of tension on the remaining slack. So the T-block, the way it works, it's like this way it slides and this way it blocks. So at this stage you can communicate with your friend. So putting a shovel or a backpack avoids the rope to sink into the, the, the edge of the cornice. It's pretty exhausting to be hanging with all the, the weight, all the snowboard and everything in the harness. So if you're unconscious, it can be pretty bad and, and like pretty damaging for the body because of non-circulation of the blood. So now we're gonna do some loops with a rope 
to demultiply the forces because I'm not gonna have enough power to just pull my fan like this. So we're gonna use the T-block to be kind of putting force into the rope in the opposite direction. You can see here, I'm gonna be pulling this way and it's gonna pull here, go to the pulley traction and be back. And that way, this is a two to one hoist. So we divide the force that we need to pull the fan by two. And at the same time, I'm gonna use all my body weight to be pulling on the rope. Uh, so it's important to pull in the direction of the rope because if you pull with an angle, you're gonna have a lot less power. And the good thing with that system is that with a pulley traction over there, everything that you pull gets blocked. So every centimeter that you gain is credit for you, is for your friend to be higher. But if you're trying to get someone like me, like a little fatty out of a crevasse, you might wanna add one loop to your hoist. So it becomes a three to one hoist. So it's gonna give you an extra power, which is going to be quite useful. And on top of this, you're gonna be kind of downhill with your body weight to pull. So you might have a lot more, a lot more power to do it. So now I'm gonna go and get some more slack. So I'm getting more slack to be pulling my friend that much more. Okay. Quite a long process as you can see, but we've done the overhanging bit, so I'm almost out. He saved me. <laughs> That's it, so what we've seen here is a very basic crevasse rescue. It's something that seems kind of easy, the theory of it is easy, but you absolutely need to practice at home on a balcony or maybe in the mountains if you're lucky enough like us today. Remember, it's not just about the gear, but it's also about the knowledge and the practice. Booyakasha! Kasha!